Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial and today we're looking at creating colour schemes from stock objects that you're using in your designs. I've got an image that I'm starting to work on here and I'm using some content from a Design Cuts pack. So let's head over to the website and see what I'm using. Well it's the Wild Flora Wonders pack by Denise Ann. It looks at first view as if this is a vector pack, but in actual fact, in addition to the vectors in the pack, there are also a whole folder of ping images. And so a lot of these art pieces are available as pings, and that's what I'm going to be using today. So let's head back to Photoshop. I'm already using one of the elements from the Wild Flora Wonders set for my illustration. And when I look at the other art in that set, you can see that there's a sort of set of theme colours, if you like, running through it. All these colours look good together. So what I'm going to do is borrow the colours for my particular work. I'm going to open this file. So I've already got it open in Photoshop. So let's go back to Photoshop and here it is open. So I'm going to the Layers palette and I'm just going to drag this layer into my working document. Now it's huge, so I'm going to press Control T, Control 0, that's Command T, Command 0 on the Mac, just to size it so I can see my sizing handles. Just going to place it in the corner here and Control or Command 0 to zoom back in. Now I'm not going to use this art in my image, but what I'm going to do is borrow its colours. So I'm going to create my own little colour swatch, so I'm creating a new layer here. The reason why I'm going to build my colour swatch on my document is because of this. Photoshop is really nowhere near as good at giving you access to colour groups and things that Illustrator is. And so trying to work with new colours in this swatches panel is really a bit of a nightmare. So designers will quite often work with little mini palettes inside the document itself. And that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to just drag out a small square here. And I'm going to fill it with the first of the colours here that I want to use. So I'm going to the eyedropper tool and this is one of the colours that I want to use. So I'm going to click on it and it becomes the foreground colour. I'm going to press Alt Backspace, that would be Option Delete on the Mac, to fill this little square with my colour. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer. So I'm just going to drag it onto the new layer icon, go to the Move tool, and I'm just going to drag this square down. I'm going to sample another colour. So in this case, this is a colour that I want to use. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to control or command click on the layer thumbnail of this particular square here and then press Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac to fill the square with the colour I want to use. And then we'll go and do that once more. So I'm going to drag the layer onto the new layer icon. So I make a duplicate. I'm going to drag the duplicate away. I'm holding the shift key so it's going to move in a perfectly vertical direction. Then I'm going to sample with the eyedropper another colour that I want to use and so I'm going to also use this blue here. It's the foreground colour. You can see that it's already selected. This little square has the marching ants around it. If it didn't I would control or command click on the layer thumbnail and then I'll press Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac to fill the square with that colour. So now in the Layers palette, I've got the three colours that I want to use. You can use more, but I'm just going to use three today. I'm finding it a little difficult to see what's happening here because these layer thumbnails are really, really small. So let's go to the Flyout menu. Let's go to Panel Options and let's select Layer Bounds and click OK. And now I can see really clearly where my colours are. So I'm going to take all these three squares, I'm going to drag and drop them on the new layer icon and I'm going to select them. So I'm just going to the Move tool and that makes sure that they are not only selected but I can move them and I'm just going to move them sideways. Now I'm going to take these three, drop them onto the new layer icon. They're now selected, Move tool's engaged and I can move my second copy over here. So what I've got is a 3x3 three three set of shapes. The middle ones are going to be my main colour and in here I want shades and in here I want tints. So we need to go lighter. Since I already have this blue selected here, I'm just going to click on it. 
And let's see how we would get a tint of this blue. Well, for a tint, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my brightness. So I'm using this HSB, the Hue Saturation Brightness area. And so I'm going to add something like about 20 to the current brightness. So that takes it up to 80. And I may want to also reduce the saturation a little bit. So it was 69. Let's take it down to 59. And what I'm looking for here is a tint of this color. And if I'm not seeing exactly what I want, then I can continue to work on it. So I'm going to add a bit more to the brightness. I'm going to subtract a little bit more from the saturation. The hue is not changing, but the saturation and brightness are. When I find the color I want, I'll click OK. And that is now my foreground color. My little swatch here that is going to be my tint is already selected and it has marching ants running around it. So I can press Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac to fill that square with my color. I'm going to press Control or Command D to deselect the selection and it's already jumped back to the one that I want to select. But you can see that as I click over these boxes, they're selecting automatically. That's because I've got Auto Select selected up here. And when you're working with these little boxes, that's quite often a really good choice. So now we're going back to this box and we need to make a shade. So it needs to be darker. I'm going to the eyedropper tool. I'm going to click on this color because I need to start with this color, not the one that I was using before. I'll click on the swatch here and now we need to go darker. So to go darker, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce brightness. So it was 60. Let's take it down to 40. And that's giving us a much darker version of this color. If it's a bit too much, you might want to come back up a little bit, maybe to 45. I'll click OK. It's now my foreground color. So I need to go and select this swatch. I'm going to control click on it so that I get the marching ants. If you don't have the marching ants, when you do the next step, it's going to fill the entire document. So just make sure you've got your marching ants. Press Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac. And so now I've got a shade and a tint of this particular color. And I'm going to do that for all of the rest. So let's just do one more together. I'm going to select this color. I'm going to sample it with the eyedropper. It's going to be my shade, so it's going to be darker. I'll click on this. I'm going to decrease my brightness. So it was 97. Let's take it down to 77. If it's not far enough, I'm going to take it down to 70, create a darker version. So let's click OK. Let's go back and select this square. It's not got the marching ants, so let's Control or Command click on the layer thumbnail so we do get those marching ants. Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac. And then we'll go back, again sampling the color. This time we want a tint, so we want it to be lighter. We can't go up much in brightness because we're pretty high up in brightness already. We won't be able to go any higher than 100, but we can reduce saturation. So I'm going to take this down to 54, again to get a lighter version. If it's not enough, I might even take it down to 44. Click OK. I've got my color, now I need to get my swatch. So I'm going to click on the swatch here. Well, it's not going to click until I press Control or Command D to deselect this one. Click on this one, Control or Command, click on the box here. Marching answer in place, Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac. And now we've got our second color. And I'm going to go ahead, speed up the video as I do the third color. I'm going to do it exactly the same way as I did the others. Now that I've got my mini color scheme, I could put all of these colors into a group and just tuck them away. So I'm going to select all the layers that are containing these colors and click here on create a new group. And all of those colors are now tucked into this group. I can hide them or display them as I like. I'm going to double click on the group and just call this colors. So they're isolated in the document, but accessible to me at any time because I can sample any of those colors by clicking the eyedropper tool and just clicking on the color. I don't need this illustrative piece any longer because I didn't want it for my document. All I wanted it for was to be able to get access to the colors so I can now trash it. And I can go back to the various elements in my document now and recolor them. So let's go to the text. I'm going to select the text layer, select the text with the text tool. And I'm going to open up the color picker here. 
Now you can see that I'm not going to have access to the colors here, but what I can do is just go and sample them with the color picker open. And then that color that is one of the colors that I've ascertained I want to use in my document is accessible to me. I'll click OK and the text is colored with that color. For the shape, I'm going to select the shape layer. I'm going to go and select a shape tool. So that makes accessible these tools up here. I'm going to the stroke. And you can see here are the colors that I've created for my document. They're in the recently used colors area. So again, it's very easy for me to just go and select one of them. Being able to create color schemes like this from stock objects that you download will help you create designs that look good because the color is consistent. Even if you're not very good at color yourself, you can just borrow these colors and everything's just going to look great. Now, if you think that that was a lot of work just to get nine colors, notice here that we've got a colors layer. And what we could do is we could just grab this and put it into, for example, a new document. So let's create a new empty document that I'm going to work on. Let's go back to this bird image. Let's take this entire group and let's drop it into the new image. And it's now an accessible color panel in this image. I could use these colors if I was using stock art from Wild Flora Wonders, or I could just use these boxes and just recolor them. Select one and then go and sample a color from the art. So it's going to be a lot easier. I'm not going to have to recreate the boxes. All I need to do is to resample some colors to use. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Photoshop techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you like the tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.